Welcome to the NC Spin After Spin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our website. We had an interesting show this past week. I want to find out from our panelists, what do you wish you'd said, but you didn't get a chance to say? Chris Fitzsimon, we'll start with you. Well, you never know whether an election, uh, uh, what happens in legislative races, even in statewide races, is, uh, is unique to a state or if it's part of a national trend. This was clearly a Republican year, and North Carolina got caught up in it. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, President Reagan, when he was president in, in, in 1986, there were eight Senate seats that were uh, that were uh, that flipped from Republican to Democrat this year. I think it'll be roughly the same when all is said and done. But it was more than that. Republican governors in places like Illinois, uh, in Maryland, uh, Maine, a very controversial Tea Party governor in Maine was reelected. I think a lot of people were surprised by. So that there was a wave. Tom Tillis did some things right, but there was also a national wave centered largely around people after six years uh, believe they need a change. And I saw an interesting comment. One final note about that. The stock market's at an all-time high. Corporate profits have never been higher as a percent of GDP since 1965. Gas is less than $3 a gallon. Uh, the, more people have health care than used to, and yet people are unhappy because it hasn't gotten down to the middle class where people are still worried. Brad, what do you wish you'd say you didn't say? Well, we ran out of time, but we were talking about courts. And I, I'll tell you, the election of Mark Martin's really an important election because our courts across the state are truly hurting in the rural areas, suburban areas, and in the metropolitan areas, Tom. And uh, Mark Martin is the fair-haired child of the Republican Party and the conservative elite across the state. So let's see if he's got the leadership ability to go to the Speaker of the House and the President pro tem and say, gentlemen, I need more money. I need more money for IT. I need more money for actual clerks, for assistant district attorneys. When are we going to invest some money in our courts? They're not being paid attention to. Will he have the leadership to go get it done? Something to watch in 2015. Becky, what do you wish you'd said? Um, we've talked about the makeup of the North Carolina House and North Carolina Senate with how many Republicans, how many Democrats, who hold super majorities and all that. But one thing that I'm really interested in is ideologically, what do those individuals who make up those bodies look like? And one thing that we saw in the House with the loss of Mike Stone, Tom Murray, Tim Moffat and Nathan Ramsey, all of those gentlemen scored really high in business friendly rankings. Um, NC Free Enterprise Foundation ranks those. Um, some of the new members that we have coming in, as you look at those with their experience, what they bring to the table, what I'm afraid we're moving towards is a General Assembly that is less business friendly, less really knowledgeable in business things. So it's something that I'll be watching, but I'm interested in that ideological makeup, not just the political. Sir, so what do you wish you'd said? <clears throat> well, when we're talking about the congressional races, um, I hope that at the national level, for the first time, Walter Jones gets to be used by the majority in the House in areas in which he has not expertise, but he also has committed a lot of his heart. I think Virginia Fox is a lady who can be used by the Republican Party as well as Renee Elmer to go out to female voters and say, look, there's a place for you within the Republican Party. Now, if you disregard what happened in North Carolina's Senate race, if as a, as a U.S. House leader, if you disregard what happened in North Carolina and don't use those three congressional people, I think you make a big mistake. Interesting. Cash, what do you wish you'd said? Tom, I, I hope that Democrats have learned from, from this disgrace of an election to learn or to run for something, not run from something. Amen. You know, th th this Good was in in incredibly embarrassing. And, and the thing that gets me is that as, as much as, as President Obama is unpopular, and there's no question about that, Republicans in Congress are even less popular than he is in terms of the polls. And I don't understand why all of the brainiacs in the Democratic Party couldn't use that as a weapon. I mean, President Obama didn't shut down the government. He didn't threaten to uh, a voting restrict. He hasn't done any of that stuff. And the stuff is there like, like low-lying fruit. And Democratic candidates instead decided, no, we're going to let Republicans determine the, 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 the terms of engagement, and we're going to run on their rules. And look what happened to them. Is this going to be a column from you? There's going to be a lot more than that. I'm eager to read it. John, what do you wish you to see it? Tom, this may sound a little bit off topic, but it really isn't. Uh, this election for journalists, pundits, election observers, people who fancy themselves political experts, should tell them something about the, the importance of avoiding selection bias and confirmation bias. In other words, so there were lots of people who 
claimed to know a lot about politics who were shocked that Tom Tillis won the race. And that is because they only looked at polls that they it struck them as plausible, that they liked. And there were, there were other polls that came out. There were fairly new pollsters that came out with polls that showed Tillis ahead. And they were immediately discounted. Well, that's just shoddy, or that's pro-Republican. The only pollster that got it right was a Republican firm that was set up as a competitor to public policy polling, which is a Democratic firm. The Republican firm is called Harper. Just a few days before the election, they put their poll out. It had a 2% Tillis win. That is what happened. I if you were reading, I know that's what I'm saying. If you read a wide variety of polls, you had a better sense of what was going to well, happen. Who told anybody about it? I didn't see it. Isn't it the job of the news media to report polls, not just the ones that they oh. like? <laughs> An indictment there. You're right. Well, thanks for watching the Afterspin. More video all during the week on ncspin.com.